Hey, it's Hello Paul. Shout out to Radio K. You are listening to Local Vibes. Thank you so much for coming in, Kalopo. How are you feeling after this? I'm feeling blessed. I'm feeling grateful, and I feel amazed. Thank you for this beautiful energy. Of course. So before we even get into the questions, I think you should break down what just happened in the studio with this band, with this improv set. I would say magic. That's the first thing. We just did magic in here when it comes to just like when you guys listen to the final product of everything and see how it goes, you will just see that's magic at the end of the day. It's magic. Yeah. And it was really cool to see how you guys kind of developed your ideas over the course of an hour. Yeah. And, yeah. and is it just kind of like super easy to do? Have you done this before with yes, these people? Yes, yes. So I've actually uh, jammed with everyone that you guys will see in the video. Um, just at multiple different, you know, open jam sessions to the point where doing these 98 retro sessions and seeing everyone that was in here a part of those where it's kind of just like we know each other enough to just be able to say pull up have fun and off of you guys having fun with the instruments i'll have fun with the music and then namdi being able to do the same so we just all came here and had fun really this is what we do on a daily basis if we were just to meet up and just create to be honest for a while um you've been a part of the scene you know from with 98 Retro? Yes, yes. And being part of a music festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, on top of all that, releasing a project named Cargo. Yes, yes. So yes. can you tell us more about your background as a hip-hop artist and how this title represented themes present throughout the album? Okay, okay. Um, I would say Cargo was me officially taking all the music that I, well, not all of it, but just a lot of the music that I was making at that time during, uh, I'd say it was like 2000... 20 to 22 because i released it in 22 i'm pretty sure um it was just really me okay this is where like the realness of cargo that actually some of those songs are actually on another project if y'all didn't know that if y'all didn't follow the music life but the, i had a first project called project poe and that was me like officially just trying to get serious when it comes to like i just want a project out but then you know learning the steps of that that was not the project to put out so then i kind of archived a bunch of songs and then from there, I just started making more music where it came to, like, I need to do this better than Project Poe because I also didn't want a title, like, my name title in a project. So then uh, we started working on Cargo. Uh, Namdi was with me. Uh, shout out Benny. Uh, and everyone else that was just a part of that when it comes to, like, me having people around me say, hey, if, if you're really trying to get into your project album mode, this is how you could do it. Because one thing I also haven't done and didn't want to do with that is drop that as an album. Because I want to put more energy, like photo shoots, you know, videos, when it comes to those things, into an album. So it's like, that right there was just kicking off, like, me being serious enough to be able to present myself as an artist, to want to do shows and have songs to perform. Um, and I'd say, that was that. That was, like, the second, that was the second half of music. The first half, I've always done music at the end of the day. Uh, I've been rapping forever. There's a YouTube video of me, like, from 2000, I want to say 10 or 12, of me rapping. So it's like, I've always loved to rap. But when I came uh, to the cities from the Burbs, that's when I kind of dove deeper into it, just seeing how people in the cities took music. And then being around Namdi also, where it was just like, okay, I need to actually, like, step up my music game versus just, I'm a good rapper. So, yes, yes. Yeah. So who is Namdi? Let's get more into who this uh, person is, how they influence your decision to I be an artist. Say, you said influence my decision to be an artist? Or, or, oh, my, never. No, I'm <laughs> joking, never. But no, Namdi is uh, a blessing when it comes to music, you feel. Uh, we actually grew up in the same uh, hometown, but we went to like rivalry high schools. So I didn't know Namdi during high school. It was one of... Uh, one of my friends that went to his high school who connected us where it's like, yo, I got a friend who makes music and makes beats and then I got a friend who freestyles and then we just met up, started freestyling in the car from there. Eventually I came and moved down to uh, Dinky Town where he was going to college and stuff and then uh, we just been connected from there and that's just like the right hand man and the go-to when it comes to music where it's like respectfully, you do need other people around you to tell you yes and no when it comes to music stuff because... It really shouldn't revolve just around you at the end of the day. Yeah. And you, when you released Project Poe and Cargo, who are some other people that influenced, or I guess, you know, 
people that you leaned on in the, throughout uh, the creation of this album? I would just say Kobe, uh, Free 99 Kobe, a.k.a. Kobe. Uh, I actually met him in the library in Egan because they have a studio there. So that's where it was like a long time ago. I'm just going to the studio at the library. My friend Obehi, shout out Obehi. And we end up opening one of these files and we just hear this person rapping on there. And we're like, yo, no way someone comes to this library and makes better music than us. So then we just kind of started waiting around at the end, you know, coming early and stuff. And then we ended up meeting him. Or it's like he went to another high school out in our uh, cities, but he's a little bit older. But that was like the first person I seen. That was actually uh, a little bit before Namdi when it came to it. That I seen like is serious with music because that's actually the first person who did my first music video. For neighborhood uh, story, which is that's a song that was uh, featured on Project Po, and did photo shoots where it's like, oh, okay, this is the next step of just making music, you know, in your room or in the library where the camera and stuff is getting involved. So, I got to give him a major shout out. Uh, I got to give the homie Day a shout out because respectfully, that's always been a homie of mine, and he's always been like, like I have Namdi. Namdi's like the soft side when it comes to like, you know. He's the one I go to where it's like, am I tweaking, bro? Or like, am I acting too much? Like, er, or he's like, he'll let me know, you feel? And sometimes, you know, Day was one of them, the opposite of that, where it's like, yo, you need to get up. You need to go and do this. Where it's like, I don't care what Namdi's saying. Like, you need to go do this. And just having a balance of that when it came to just having friends that are, you know, able to tell you what to do and what not to do. So I would say him. And then I just know so many people in music where I couldn't just... Uh, give them all a shout out but shout out everyone that's what i'm gonna say shout out everyone everyone shout out my older brother too because i always try to be better than him in the music stuff and eventually he doesn't even do music no more so he just love i still do music at the end of the day yeah and you know friendship and that you know these people in your life are very common themes about you know your music mm -hmm. and along with that is you know religion which is also a part of important part of your life yes you know, and you, part of you you know, and has it ever been difficult for you to maintain your faith, you know, in the presence of hardship, you know, and hard to have to write it and put it into this music? Yes, most definitely. The more open I've been with myself, the more it's hard it's been. Because it's like, you know, you put stuff on tracks and then that's like putting it in time. Where when you have to think, like the more vulnerable you get with yourself, you're thinking about the more stuff you've done. Where it could be happy and also sad. So the more vulnerable you get, you can think more sad. And then acknowledging, I'm going to put this on a track that can be around forever. So I don't even know if that answers the question, but like, yeah, I kind of forgot the question too, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's okay. laughs> you know, it's it's something that you do preach a lot, you know, from show to show. I mean, I've seen you and, you know, you'll freestyle and you talk about religion and it, it seems like a, something that's very present yes, throughout your life. Yes, it's, yes. And that's not very common, you know. Is that is that ever difficult or weird for you for it to be not as common with rap artists or artists throughout the city? I think it depends on what music you listen to. Yeah. Because Kendrick is my favorite artist. So is Pac. When it comes to like you know old age, new age. When it comes to rappers, and they also had God within their music. Also, even other people I look up to when it comes to like you know professional athletes, where it's like you know a lot of people give praises to the Lord. Where it's like, eventually, I understand when it comes to that, it's discipline for me. Because I wouldn't really say I conform, confirm to a, a religion, but I did grow up in the Catholic Church. Uh, my brother went to Creighton Durham Hall. So, like, my family's always been, like, around the religious way of things when it comes to... I'm adopted by my aunt, me and my twin are. Uh, so just learning from the... Learning from a young age how much is it's just blessings to just be where I'm at, to be in different places where it's like just thanking the Lord for things that I can't thank other people for because respectfully, I, I can't really thank myself. So it's just like, that's, you know, that's been a major help. But no, I don't think it's, I don't think it's odd. If anything, I, I think it's a, I think it's beautiful because the more I, I, I do this, the more I want people to understand you can't have God doing this because at first I didn't think like that. At first it was just like a God complex where it's like, I'm doing this, this is all me. Uh, and then you go through, you know, you go through that darkness where it's like, you got to sit with yourself and think, this is all me. And then you got to think, I might not have help. And this is all me and my fault. So who am I going to go to? And that's where I found God in the music, where it's like, 
I had to realize I was really good with people around doing it, but then I was really alone when I wasn't doing it. And who's going to get me through? Because I only know me for me doing music. So that's where I had to figure out like other things to do other than just revolve around music. Were there any other things that you know music has kind of revealed within yourself? You know? uh, yes, it's revealed that I can have fun. It's revealed that I don't need to be serious all the time. Like, I am a father, so this music really helps me, like, A, put my son in the right position when it comes to, if I'm doing this the right way, then he'll be able to benefit, like, off of what I'm doing with music. From the people I know, the things I've done, and the places I plan to go. So, that just puts the cherry on top of all of it. Yeah. And, you've, you know, you stated about your journey, you know, you've stated how it's been like, you know, throughout the journey of being a father and being a mentor for your child. And how has being a mentor shaped your approach to your life and your creative process? First thing is a blessing. I just, I, I, it's a blessing to have people want to sit and listen because a lot of people aren't doing that nowadays. So that's the first thing I feel where it's like, I, I feel appreciated that people like to sit and listen to things that I have to say because I see there are some people who don't might not know how to present what they want to say, even though they're really good thinkers and people and mentors, which is they don't know how to present it. So I'm just glad that I'm able to be able to present it for people to listen because every day I'm thinking, how can we all do better, be better, become better? And the more people that tune into that help me become better, be better, where it's just a blessing to be able to do that. Yeah, and this work has, you know, bled into different parts of your life. You know, I've seen that you've, volunteered at a music camp recently in minneapolis oh yeah yeah so that's coming up in june shout out to amara but yeah me and namdi are going to be working with uh the youth all the way to ages i want to say 20 when it comes to just doing like a uh, session and then them doing you know some choreography and stuff and then them performing so yes that is in the future that's june around after june what is that june i want to say like june 20th 24th but yeah yeah are there any kind of like goals you would like to accomplish you know when it comes to um pouring back into the community you know whether it be musically whether it be in any other sort of way yes the goal is to a start my 98 retro sessions again where that is you know open community session for artists to come in and connect with other artists but also make music with other artists shout out to the legacy building ian fancy uh where that gives back to the community. Also, me getting in this spot with the green screen, shout out Gabe, shout out Olivia. Um, that space being a place where you can now, you know, do podcasts. Uh, there's movie theater in there. There's uh, green screens and stuff in there. Also, shout out Nerdy. He's in there, you know, with his DJ, shout out DJ Hayes. Where it's just like being able to get these opportunities that's been given to me and, re and just do them again. That is the goal, to start like doing 98 retro sessions again for the community but add in the green screen to it. Yeah. And what kind of artists have you seen come through with these, these 98 retro sessions? Are they relatively new? Or are they old? What is I've that like? seen new, old, young, old, just like all types of artists. I love it because it's just like seeing so many different types of artists actually want to be able to go to a space where they can see their favorite artists, but because they might not be in the same genre, they don't know how they're going to end up doing that. Where it's like, yo, I really don't, you know, go to your shows because respectfully, like, I might just like you, but I don't like, you know, really the type of music you make. Where, you know, this one is open where, you know, instrumental, instrumentalists and everyone gets to come where it's like, you guys are all going to come together no matter what, you know, spaces and places you come from and cultivate a sound together. And that's just, uh, that's what I really love about that. Like just seeing so many different types. Like, there's a person that came to uh, the session on accident. Like, literally, he came there thinking, uh, Jaquan, shout out Jaquan. He's 19, too. He came there for his friend's uh, performance. He thought his friend was performing there. His friend performed, what, a week earlier? And it was just one of those where it's like, well, you happen to come here at the perfect time where he just hopped in on the session and he's just like, wow. Like, it's really like that where you know i wouldn't say someone off the street but like it's really that open for people to come in here from different ages and all that because we all leave ego and pride at the door we're just blessed to be able to be in the same space as other artists yeah 
Have you ever caught yourself unexpectedly learning something about an artist or learning something about music, you know, from someone that you would have never really listened to? Uh, yes, most definitely, most definitely. I was going to say, I actually learned something today with, uh, with Beck, actually, even though I listened to Beck. But Beck just kind of telling me, like, when it comes to, uh, you know, playing with the band, you don't really need too many people on instruments because that's what I thought you needed. This is, like, the first times... I'm really now playing with live bands because I usually am just rapping over instrumental that I've, you know, have. But just learning that from Beck today where it's like, or yesterday, where it's like, okay, I don't need to stress myself out thinking I need so many players to be here versus, you know, just the solid of one, two, and three. And, but yes, I learn all the time. I love learning from other musicians. Like, that's the beauty of this, where you put a space and people come and tell you what to do. And then you get to leave there and just, just so much knowledge from everyone. Yeah. So Cargo, you know, it features a lot of um, jazz-inspired beats, mm -hmm. boobat instrumentals. And were there any specific eras of hip-hop um, or artists that played a large role in the creation of this album? Um, yes. I'm going to say J. Cole, definitely. Uh, Forest Hill Drive, I would say that would definitely be a reference track. Joey Badass, uh... Uh, what is it? 1999. I'm pretty sure. Is that the project? Is that the name? 1999. That's definitely an influence. Kendrick Lamar, like Untitled, uh, all a lot of Kendrick Lamar, and then just also like my friends around me. That's the number one thing that like I want people to understand. Where it's like you do have in as a, and this is me putting my perspective on this. I do have artists that like I look up to, that like you know definitely you know inspire me. It's really the people around me, like my friends, who really inspire me the most when it comes to creating my sound. Where it's like, like I said, I could say Kendrick J. Cole and Joey Badass, but it's really like, you know, messing around with all my friends who do music, where it's like, what would you do with this, with this, with this? Where I got to give them more, you know. I got to give them more praises than like, like I said, because I love Kendrick J. Cole and Joey, but without Namdi, Benny, like I say, Day... Even Aaron, even though I just met Aaron, Aaron, how he comes in with his drums, where it's like, yo, I'm learning just new stuff right now based on how you just play the drums, because I've never done this before, so, yeah. Yeah. You know, as a self-described, you know, lyrically conscious writer, mm -hmm. um, what artists have influenced your decision to discuss these themes throughout your work? Uh, I'd say Pac, Tupac. Yeah. I'd definitely say him, because for me, it's deeper than the music. It's about how much influence can you get from the music to then actually push what you really want to push. And that's something I've seen that he eventually dove into. Where it's like, instead of just doing this rap, I want to get into movies. I want to start fighting for our rights. You feel I want to start using this lyrics to put me in the room with people who don't even care about music. They care about actual deeper stuff than music. Because to me, it's always deeper than music. I just use this music because it gives me a platform to speak on where people can understand it's deeper than music with him. Yeah. So, yeah. Are there any sorts of mediums that you've also explored, you know, other than music to kind of explore these themes and kind of get these word out about politics, about, you know, messages, messages that you believe should mm -hmm. be known? Um, I can't really sit here and say yes right now, but I do plan on trying to do short films, you know, uh, art, like, I plan on just getting into other ways of creating where it adds influence and uh, brings knowledge to, like, platforms that I have. Yeah. And, you know, Minneapolis is a very competitive, you know, scene when it comes to rap, when it comes to indie. Mm -hmm. You know, but why should people listen to you? Why should, what, what, what do you have that people don't have? I think I have the power to cultivate spaces and experiences that, it's fun. I feel like if we were all to take away the music sometimes around these artists, could you just sit and have fun with this artist? Or are you just here with this artist for the music? And that's where, you know, I talk to my friends a lot about where it's like, I could sit and say, I don't think I'm the best lyrical artist here. But when it comes to being able to put things together, I think that's what puts me in the next step where it's like, I could just be a good rapper with myself, my friends who are all good at what they do. Or I could do this and then also open up a studio session for the community. Where, like, that's the thing that I think puts me 
in the next step now where it's like giving back to the community. So that's why I think people should listen to me because it's like, okay, you get to listen to my lyrics. This person, you know, talks about God. He talks about making it through. He talks about love and all this. So then when you come to an experience that I have, that's what you're going to also feel there where it's really just peaceful, beautiful energy where, because you got to be able to kick it around artists. That's what I believe. I believe, you know, I want to be an artist that people don't just listen to, that people want to come out and support different things that I'm doing. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, thank you. Yes, looking forward to having you back. Yes, most definitely. I would love to be back. I would definitely love to be back. Thank you all for having me. Of course.